Hello folks, my name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times and this is your week in review for the first week of February 2018. As you guys heard it folks, this is your week in review and we're going to start off with uh, President Trump tells workers that tax cuts are not crumbs. As you guys can remember, Nancy Pelosi said in a Democrat press briefing after the tax cuts that everything that these corporations are giving, the $1,000 bonuses, $2,000, $3,000 bonuses, and uh, wage raises that have, haven't happened in a very long time are just crumbs. That's what she said, crumbs. And then she made the gesture of her hands down, you know, pointed downward saying these are just crumbs that these corporations are giving uh, people, right? She's saying it's not enough. Okay, I don't know what she expects. She's a billionaire. She's a millionaire, actually. So I don't know what she expects, but these $1,000 bonuses, these $3,000 bonuses, these wage raises are not crumbs. And that's exactly what the president was saying. This one comes courtesy of the Washington Times. And it says, on Wednesday, in a meeting with American workers who have benefited from the recent overhaul of the American tax code led by President Donald Trump, the president told workers their bonuses are not crumbs. One guest from Iowa even revealed that his family will pocket an extra $5,000 this year from the tax cuts alone. $5,000, folks. That is a lot of money. That can easily put a lot of college into a young person that could give the um that could be extra money put to the side for either a rainy day or for a hospital bill five thousand dollars is a lot of money imagine you get five thousand dollars that you can put off to the side and you're the type of person that likes to save and you're good at it and you save it over five years that's twenty five thousand dollars Okay, that's money that someone could have potentially invest into something and make those $5,000 into a million. You never know. This is the kind of stuff that if you don't get the chance to do it, how would you know? But now these people are going to be allowed or have the ability to do it. These $5,000 can turn into someone that wants to become an entrepreneur that's going to create millions of jobs in the future that can create a huge company, a breakthrough. But we would have never known unless these taxes went through and we're glad that they did. All right. So let's move on to the next one. And it says oil production is ramping up. As you guys heard it, folks, it says U.S. oil production tops 10 million barrels a day for the first time since the 1970s this one comes courtesy of cnbc and it says for the first time since the 70s the u.s crude oil production broke 10 million barrels a day america's status is growing as the world's third largest oil producer with production expected to expand they said that the president's administration has embraced energy as an economic force and has declared that the u.s will be dominant unlocking new sources of oil uh, domestically. So this comes as the Democrats are trying to sue from coastal states. I know that some Democrats were suing in Florida. Some Democrats are planning to sue in other areas. Democrats are trying to sue in, in Texas and other, you know, like I said, other areas of the state. And, um, and they're trying to block this. They're trying to block this 100%. They can care less if this is good for the country. They can care less if it's good for jobs, if good for the economy. They can care less about that. The only reason that they hate it is because President Trump was the one that is, is pushing this. It's making sure that we become dominant on ourselves. Okay, we, 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 I mean, uh, that we become dominant in the world, but we become reliable and we rely on ourselves compared to oil from Saudi Arabia. 
that is the reason why President Trump wants this to happen. He wants to make sure that we get the dominance that we that we deserve. Right now, we're in third place. But who knows? We might find an area that is very rich in oil. And we tap into that and we become an extremely wealthy country like Saudi Arabia. You never know. So that's a very good thing for us. Um, the next one says that unemployment may fall to 3.5% in a year. 3.5% folks, just last month, the month of January, we have seen one of the greatest growths in a while. And that's not talking about the last year. The last year we have, ex you know, excellent, excellent growth. But in January, 2018 alone, we have created 250,000 jobs. And by me, by when I say we, we mean Americans. Americans have created over 250,000 new jobs. And it's expected to continue up to the point where unemployment will fall to 3.5%. That's a very good thing. This one comes courtesy of Axios. And it says that uh, Moody's uh, analytic chief economist, Mark Zandi, predicts that the U.S. jobless rate may reach 3.5% by this time next year. So meaning the beginning of 2019. A level reached in only two years as his other periods since the government began keeping such records in 1948. So this has never been seen. In the last... Uh, roughly 70 years it hasn't been seen so something is working something is moving the economy is recovering as you guys saw probably yesterday or today that the mainstream media talking points are already going crazy because the stock market dipped 666 points that's not a lot, but they're saying that this is the worst dip since the president became, since the president came to office and they're blaming it on him. They're going to try to do anything they possibly can to blame it on him. They can care less if it has been breaking records for the last five, six months. They can care less. I think it has broken records hundreds of times. Until we got to this point where it dipped 666% or points. I'm sorry. The guy from Mad Money came out yesterday on uh, MSNBC and said, this is nothing. It has to do this. They're making something out of nothing. He said, you know what? By the time that Monday rolls around, by the time that the mid of the week rolls around uh, next Wednesday, everything is going to go back to normal. We're going to start breaking records again. This is just something that happens because of one thing, because of another, maybe a company wasn't doing as great. Maybe this, maybe that. It's just a little dip. We didn't go down 6,000 points. If we would have gone 6,000 points, then all hell would have broken loose. We didn't go down a thousand points where we'll turn people going into panic. It was 600 points. We can recover. We can come back and it's going to be way better than, than it was before. So uh, let's move on, and we're going to be talking now about Cigna. If you guys don't know what Cigna is, it's basically a insurance company. And uh, I think they also own a couple hospitals, if I'm not mistaken. But it says that Cigna raises wages, benefits, following tax law. This one comes courtesy of the Washington Examiner, and it says that on Thursday, Health Insure, insurance company, Cigna announced that it would increase the minimum wage for their employees and raise contributions in retirement accounts because of the passage of the Republican tax law signed by President Donald Trump last year, late last year. So this is just another company. A lot of companies have come out, Walmart and uh, Apple and Bank of America and Chase and now Cigna and all these companies have been surfacing and saying, hey, you know what? Because of the tax cuts, because of the, ta the new tax uh, rule, 
we're going to be giving a thousand, two thousand, three thousand tax bonuses. And uh, some companies, smaller companies, are saying, you know what, this is a one time thing. <laughs> you know, this is a one time thing, but we are giving a thousand dollar bonuses. Other companies are saying, oh, bigger companies that have more capital, they're saying, we are going to be giving a thousand dollar bonuses. We are going to be raising the minimum wage for X amount of employees. This would have never happened, folks, if this were, if tax law wouldn't have gone through. It would have never, ever happened. How long have you guys seen these people protesting all over the country saying that they want to get their wage up, that they want pay raises? You always see people protesting in different fields because they want to get a wage increase. And now a huge percentage of those people are finally getting the wage raise that they deserve and also a little bonus on the side. Okay, so it's definitely not crumbs like the Democrats want you to think. Like Nancy Pelosi wants you to think. It's not crumbs at all. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And we're going to be talking about popularity. It says popularity of Trump, uh, Trump tax tr uh, reform skyrockets as more Americans realize it cuts their taxes. So tax season barely started. It started like a week ago. And people are starting to notice a couple things. As you guys remember, a uh, CMB director came out, I think it was a week ago, two weeks ago, talking about the tax cuts. When are you going to see them in your, in your paychecks? They were saying, Mulvaney was saying that, you know, it could happen at the beginning of the month, meaning this month. They were saying that some other companies were going to roll it out towards the middle, maybe the end of this month. But most definitely, at least 90% of the companies in the United States were already going to establish, had rolled out, or is rolling out the tax cuts by the end of the month, meaning the 1st of March. So the 1st of March on, that's when you're definitely going to see a change in your paycheck. And also, you're going to be able to see a change in your tax return. Okay, so that, that's going to be the, the, the biggest thing for a lot of people this year is noticing that they're getting more on their paychecks. Noticing that they are getting a wage increase if your company did it. And noticing that when you do your taxes, you get a double incentive for kids. And that you are going to be paying at a different bracket than you were before. So all of these things are going to happen to people all at the exact same time. Bigger returns on their tax, on their tax returns. More money on their paychecks a raise on their paychecks. All of this is going to happen around the same time. So stay tuned. Um, it says uh, popularity. Uh, President Trump's tax reform skyrockets as more Americans realize it cuts their taxes. This one comes courtesy of Breitbart.com. And it says that a new poll from the Monmouth uh, University, it says the popularity of the new tax reform package is skyrocketing as more Americans realize they are keeping more of their hard-earned money because they're in a different tax bracket the numbers suggest that the tax reform would become even more popular in the coming months for the reasons that i just told you so just stay tuned folks and that's and that's just uh on your paycheck alone and that's just on the bonuses and and, and the wage increases that you're getting take a look at your 401ks take a look at all of your retirement plans if you're an investor, take a look at that too. Take a look at your portfolios if you have one. Take a look of, at all of the stuff that is going on in the financial part. 
you'll be shocked if you haven't checked yet what's going on. Now, if you don't see anything as big as you possibly could on your 401k is because you need to tweak it a little bit and make sure that you, uh, you know, you're a little bit more aggressive uh, instead of moderate or, 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 or the lowest one that they have, you know, but you should see something, something of a change on your 401k. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And we're going to be talking about the press. Now, President Trump is very, very critical of the press. And it's not because he doesn't like what they're, what they should be talking about. Um, he does it because what they do talk about, it's completely and utterly false. And what they should be talking about is not even mentioned or an honorable mention or nothing like that. Okay, tax cuts is supposed to be a very good thing. Have they ever in the mainstream media had a guest come out and said, hey, What's going on with tax reform in your personal life? No, because they know if they get somebody up there and talk about tax reform, they're going to say, it's great. I got more money. I got a wage increase. I got a thousand dollar bonus. I got back more. I'm going to get more back on my taxes and my 401k through the roof. Okay. So that's why they don't do it. But the president now is focusing a little bit more on local news stations, local reporters and local pundits. And that's what this is about. It says President Trump invites local news reporters to Oval Office. This one comes courtesy of Gray DC. And it says this week, the president invited local reporters from across the country to the Oval Office on an off the record reception. This event gave local reporters an opportunity to get down to the local issues that matter to their viewers all across the country. So the Trump White House has been doing this since the very beginning, you know, with uh, getting questions from local reporters or from people that don't have a press access on, um, on the press pool at the White House. So they would get questions via Skype to, um, to answer questions by the press secretary regarding issues that is impacting, uh, the people directly from certain areas, because certain areas of the country have certain issues and they wanted to bring it up to the attention of the white house. And that's exactly what they were doing up to the time that Sean Spicer left since uh, Sean Spicer left, Sarah Sanders have, has not done it. And I think it's a shame that she has not actually taken uh, uh, questions from the press, from the local press, instead of just the national press. I think that they should go back to doing Skype calls and they should do more Skype calls and lower the number of people being picked at the press briefings and switch it up a bit, you know, do more press briefing. I mean, a uh, press core questions one day, do a lot less the next day, do more video calls and then switch it back and forth, back and forth. So everybody can at least get somewhat of an equal say. I think that this, that that's what they should be doing, but that's just up to me. All right. So let's move on to the next one. And on the next one and final one, we're going to be talking about how president Trump or the Trump administration is using terrorist smartphones and laptops, all that information in order to defeat them. So they're using their own information to defeat terrorists. And we're talking about terrorists all over the place. We're talking about Iran. We're talking about uh, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, all of those places. We're using their information, their intel, in order to know what they're doing, where they're going, how they're funding themselves, where they're going to be next and where to attack. This one comes courtesy of USA Today. It says a profile on the National Media Exploitation Center of the U.S. Today details how the U.S. government is capturing ISIS devices on the battlefields of Iraq and Syria, providing a huge boost to the U.S. intelligence community as it hunts terrorists. I love the way that they say that they hunt terrorists inflicting fear on your enemy. I love that. 
Um, it says that the data collected here include videos and photos that help identify militants and their leaders even when a device is damaged or information is deleted. Now, I said this before uh, on, on, on a previous video talking about information. I think it was when I was uh, talking about the, the recent release of the memo and the, the recent release of text messages between Storic and Page. Um, I was saying that even if you think that you have deleted something, that you have wiped something, it always leaves it in code. It's always going to be there. You cannot delete it. You can try your best to scrub it and delete it and, and try to, like Hillary Clinton did, uh, bleach bit it and all this other uh, stuff, but it's all fake news, folks. You just can't delete it. Maybe you can delete the picture as you had it, but the code for that picture, it's still there. The code for that text message, that email, that that tweet, that uh, post, whatever it was, it's still there. Everything is there, but it's in code. And it takes a professional or a group of professionals to break it and bring it back. Maybe not in its original form, but they're going to be able to see what it was or what it said. So that's exactly what they're doing now in the intelligence community is that they're getting all of these laptops and phones and stuff like that. And even if they don't, if, even if they don't work, even if they, um, have deleted them, they're able to get it back in code, crack it and see what was said. And they're using that information, that Intel to track them down and hunt them down and, and, and terminate whatever ones they need terminated or other ones that they need to be arrested to get more information from them or send them over to Guantanamo Bay, which will remain open. The president already said Guantanamo Bay is to remain open. It's open and it's ready to get filled. And that's what's going to start happening soon. Soon, folks. There's a lot of commotion going on in Guantanamo Bay right now, folks. Who knows who the new, um, you know, the new inmates are going to be, but there's, there's commotion going on. There's movement. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of information on social media within the last few weeks talking about Guantanamo Bay and that whole area. Planes going back and forth, uh, planes turning off in that area, turning off their, their navigation systems and, uh, being in the dark, going off the grid. So tons of that stuff is going on. But yeah, folks, so that was your week in review for the last week, uh, beginning week of uh, February. So this is our very first week in review. Uh, we're going to have a few more. Uh, we always do this. Whenever we can, we always do this. And uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give us a, a like button, smash the like button, the thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel if you liked our report and you want to see more. Uh, we do live streaming of political events, the president, uh, the White House, press briefings, all that good stuff. We stream it all live here at Golden State Times. We also upload a whole bunch of news videos. Uh, we have a website, goldenstatetimes.com. Again, that's goldenstatetimes.com. Uh, make sure that you guys uh, go and check it out. Also, make sure that you, uh, you sign up to the newsletter by using the link in the description below. That newsletter is sent every single day, packed full of videos, news, uh, articles, all that stuff. Everything that we cover throughout the day is all on our newsletter. So if you miss something and uh, you're signed up to the newsletter, then you can stay up to date. So it's very important for you guys to go and check it out and uh, sign up. Uh, it costs nothing. It's very easy. And uh, if you guys don't like it, you guys can always unsubscribe. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to be, uh, uh, you guys are going to like it. So. Make sure that you guys go and sign up. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, my name is Gent. I'm from Golden State Times, and this was your Week in Review. And I hope you guys stay tuned here at Golden State Times, and I'll see you soon. Peace.